Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Very excited to have you with me again today. And today's topic is a favorite cheap flights. So I recorded a video on cheap flights last week. It was very popular. We were talking about Skyscanner and all the ways that you can use Skyscanner to save money for your upcoming trip. Today, I want to talk about another website, which is also a great tool in the search for cheap flights, and that is Google Flights. Now, the way I like to distinguish these two is that Skyscanner is really great for searching the traditional way where you put in your destinations, you get a list, and you can go through the list and look at your options. Google Flights is really great for people who are more visual. You can search using a map, so you can put your origin in, look at different destinations around the world visually. It's great if, say, you know you want to go to a particular region like Eastern Europe and you're not married to a particular destination or you're fine with flying into different airports and you'd like to see how close together they are to each other or how close they are to certain cities that you'd like to visit. So let me pull up the Google Flights website. And to get here, you can very easily just type in Google Flights in your search bar and it should pop up fairly, as I said, fairly quickly. Now, Google Flights, much like Skyscanner, lets you be flexible in your search. The biggest difference is that you don't type in everywhere in the destination bar, but rather you go to the Explore Destinations tab here on the page to see your options in visual form. So I just have my origin typed in. Um, New York is my origin city. Don't worry too much about the dates at this point. I'm looking for round trip travel. And I'll go to Explore Destinations, click on this button. And you'll see that it opens up a map. It's North America centric right now, but you can move this map around and it will instantly update with prices for destinations around the world. Now you are able to customize a little bit. So you'll see on the left hand side, um, you could put in a particular destination if you want. I'm going to leave it open so we can see the full functionality of the map. Over here, you can choose a particular month, much like we did with Skyscanner. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the cheapest month of the year feature that Skyscanner does, which is why I would recommend using both websites and cross-referencing. But it does have these neat options to search for a weekend, a one week, or a two week trip, which may be really helpful if you're trying to plan a particular length of travel, but you're not married to particular dates or even a particular month. So let's do one week trip in the next six months, which is the option that we have here. Now you could do two weeks or a weekend, as I said, but we'll do one week. Let's hit done. And then we have some filters. So one of the filters that you can choose here is to choose nonstop flights only. I'm not really concerned about layovers. Uh, I don't love trips that involve two or more stops. So I'm thinking one stop or fewer would be ideal for me. This is a really neat feature here. All gives you places that are reachable by plane and car. So you could get a combination of different transit options, which might be of interest. We'll stick with flights only since that's the theme of this video. Price, you could be specific. I'll leave it open. Same with the airlines. I'm not overly concerned. Uh, if you want carry-on bags to be included or you want that price to be built into your search, you can do that as well. I'm doing this as if it were just a simple backpack trip, so I'm going to leave those features blank. Just put in my one stop or fewer option, close the filter section, and then let's see what we have on the map. So remember, departure is New York. So you can see there is a wide variety of pricing that's showing up on this map 
from you know the very expensive Fort McMurray in Northern Alberta to a super cheap trip over to Boston or even cheaper Miami. New York to Miami is a very cheap route. If you didn't know this, Google Flights is a great way to find out information like this. And then if you zoom in, you will get some of the less popular destinations that are around the particular area. So let's say you know you really want to go somewhere in Mexico. You can zoom in to Mexico and see what your options are. So as usual, Mexico City is a little bit more expensive than destinations like Cancun, for example. But it is possible to get to Mexico City for 326 round trip, which is a pretty good deal. And when you click, you can see on the left hand side of your screen what the different flight itineraries look like. So that cheapest one that's being quoted is a trip with Volaris, which is a Mexican discount airline. I've taken Volaris before. I'll leave that for another video, but it was quite an interesting experience. I don't know if I'd ever fly Volaris again. And then you can see other options. If you click view flights, as I just did, it will open up more detailed information about all of the flights to Mexico City, with the cheapest one being highlighted in a different color so that you can see it at the top of your list. Hit the drop down arrow, get the itinerary, details on whether there are stopovers or non stop. So this one is non stop. So of course, it's not the cheapest. Our cheapest was the Valeris flight with a stop in El Salvador from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. So you know it really depends on your appetite for that kind of stopover. But if you're trying to save money, it may be of interest. We can go back to our previous page. And one thing I really like about Google Flights is that it opens up these different search results as a new tab, as opposed to having to hit the back button. So it doesn't mess with your original search. And we can keep looking around. So I'll zoom out at this point. Latin America, let's say you fancy going to Latin America. Costa Rica is quite affordable. Colombia is always affordable from New York, but you can see what your best options are. And then of course we can zoom out and go to a different region of the world. So if you really fancy a trip to Europe, zoom in, give it a second to load and you're seeing all the different prices pop up here. So there's a new discount airline as I've mentioned previously to Norway. So there are tickets to Oslo for under 400. It's my understanding with this airline, um, you may even be able to get round trips under 300. And then of course, if you wanna go further afield, you could continue, scroll out, continue to look at Asia, Southeast Asia, for example. Central Asia tends to be pretty expensive to fly to, but you may get some cheaper options to India, for example, or Thailand, not currently, but in the past, when Air China was flying, Air China is not really operating right now due to the situation in China with the lockdowns, but Air China used to offer some really good fares, like four to 500 round trip to places in Southeast Asia like Bangkok. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, that that comes back on our radar soon. And just before I end this quick video on Google Flights, I wanna make a little comment comparing Google Flights and Skyscanner. In my opinion, Google Flights is great for visualizing things as we've just done, but it's not always the best in terms of quoting the cheapest fares. So to New Delhi, India, for example, I have definitely seen fares on Skyscanner as low as 600 round trip from New York. So I'm a little skeptical that this 685 would be the best deal available. What I'm trying to say here is that no tool is perfect 
And I would strongly suggest that you compare multiple tools when searching for discount flights. So you can start with Google Flights if you'd like. Sometimes they even have the best deals. Um, but if you find an itinerary that you're really interested in, like, oh, wow, that's a good price to do Delhi, I would cross-reference it with a quick Skyscanner search just to make sure you're getting the best possible deal. In the world of discount flights, it's always about searching multiple different sources. Focus on the larger consolidator websites like Skyscanner and Google Flights so that you're not wasting your time searching smaller, narrower databases that may not focus on all of the options available or a large percentage of the options available around the world. And do your research that way. Also, I've heard from some people that different days of the week might yield different pricing. There are so many different theories about this. Some people say Tuesday and Wednesday are the best days to search for flights. I've heard that it's actually Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Um, who knows? I've tried different ones, to be honest with you. The best option, in my opinion, is to just keep searching on multiple days at multiple times. And you will notice that flight prices do differ depending on when you're conducting your search. So happy searching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of future videos. And please comment below. Let me know what is your experience with Google Flights versus Skyscanner? Do you like one platform better than the other? Do you use both? Do you feel like I do that there are different purposes to both Skyscanner and Google Flights and it's worth checking both? Let me know and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.